can't think of anything that you can do to make your bike safer than to add better lighting to make you more visible to drivers. I just got a new kit in, LED replacement bulbs from SoCal Moto Gear, and I'm going to do just that. I'm going to replace these old incandescent OEM taillight and brake light bulbs and turn signal bulbs with these new, brighter, more reliable LEDs. Now I know what you're probably thinking, you can buy LEDs anywhere, you can get them at the auto parts store, you can get them online, and all LEDs are the same. Well I'm here to tell you, they're not all the same. A lot of times they're old technology, they're just not that bright, or they don't fit right in the OEM connectors. I, I even know some guys that replace these entire uh, housings just to get LED lights. That's hundreds of dollars, that's crazy. You know when you buy something from the guys at SoCal, you're getting good quality, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna install these on this 2012 Goldwing, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. The LEDs from SoCal Moto Gear have a label indicating the color of the bulb. Here you can see we have red for a brake tail light. LEDs draw much less power than standard bulbs. Here you can see we're powering these with nothing but a 9 volt battery. On pre-2012 models, you have two brake tail bulbs in each fixture in the trunk, one tail light bulb in each saddlebag fixture, and one turn signal in each fixture. On 2012 and later models, you have two tailed brake bulbs in each fixture in the trunk. You have two tail light bulbs in the center section of the bottom fixture, and you have one turn signal bulb on each side of the bottom fixture. The first step is to locate the three 8mm acorn nuts that hold the tail light assembly in place inside the trunk. Go ahead and remove all three of these 8mm nuts. With the nuts removed, you can now grab the tail light assembly and pull it free from the trunk. You'll notice there are two tail light bulb connectors and you can turn those counterclockwise just one quarter of a turn and the bulb will come free. You can remove the bulb from the connector by pulling straight out. Now it may be a little tight, you might have to wiggle a little bit, but just pull it straight out and it will come free from the connector. Now you're ready to install your replacement LED bulb. You want to make sure that you have the correct bulb. Make sure it has the red dot on the package, that's a red bulb. And it goes in the same way the old bulb came out, you just slip it into place. Now, you always want to test these bulbs before you reinstall them in the fixture. And if one of them doesn't work, turn it around, pull it out, turn it around, try it again. It probably just was in the wrong way. Now just insert the bulbs back into the fixture the way the old ones came out, put the fixture back in place, and tighten all the acorn nuts. Now after replacing the bulbs in one fixture, if you turn the bike on, you can clearly see the difference in how much brighter the Goldwing LEDs are than your OEM bulbs. Now go ahead and replace the bulbs in the other trunk fixture. Open your saddlebags and look toward the rear up at the top and you'll find some acorn nuts. There's two 10 millimeter nuts on the 2012 and greater that actually hold the rear bottom tail light assembly in place. Now, on a 2001 to 2010, there's actually three acorn nuts that's going to hold each of those fixtures in place. You want to remove those. And on a 2012 and greater, you're going to remove all four 10 millimeter acorn nuts from both saddlebags. Once you do that, the tail light assembly will just pull out as shown. Remove the two tail light bulbs just like you did previously. One quarter turn to the left, they'll come out. They're behind the red lens in the center and remove them from the connectors as shown. And you're ready to replace those now with your new LEDs. Again, make sure they have the red dot on the package so they're the red LEDs. And insert those. Make sure to test them before you put them back into the fixture. Now you're ready to reinstall your light fixture just the way it came out, but if you're installing the turn signals, the LED turn signals, you're going to have to go to step three first before you reinstall the light fixture. If you're just installing the brake tail light LEDs, you're done. Reinstall the light fixture, 
Put the four 10 millimeter acorn nuts back in place and you're ready to ride. Remove the two turn signal bulbs on the 2012. They're on the outside of the fixture. They're the amber bulbs. And on your earlier models, they're at the top of your saddlebag fixture. Go ahead and replace them with the LED bulbs. Make sure to test them before you reinstall them into the fixture. Now you're ready to replace the fixture, put it back in the same way it came out, and make sure to tighten the acorn nuts that hold the fixtures in place. Installing LED turn signals on a Goldwing does require that you replace the Goldwing's flasher unit with a load equalizer. And next, we're going to show you how to do that. There are a couple of different ways to get to the flasher on the Goldwing. Now the quickest way and one way is to go in from the rear underneath the dash. The other option is to go in from the front and that requires removing the windshield and the front garnish and a few other pieces. Uh, both ways will work. It's just a matter of your preference. I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. Now the first step is to release the meter panel. Lift up firmly at the back. There's a couple of plastic pins that fit into rubber grommets and then begin to wiggle the meter panel and these clips will come loose. There's a series of clips around the perimeter that hold it in place. And once you get it completely loose, carefully, because there are wires so you don't want to pull on it too hard. Now your Goldwing may have tweeters uh, mounted to the speakers on each side of the meter panel and there's a rubber boot that covers the tweeter and you're going to remove those rubber boots like shown and then you'll remove the connector. There's a little tab that you'll push down on with your finger as shown here and that will allow you to remove that connector. The next step, and quite frankly the hardest step, is removing the main electrical connector that holds the meter panel in place. Now this connector has a tab that you will have to press with your finger or using some needle nose pliers and remove it. Here you can see what the connector looks like after it's been disconnected and removed. Once that's removed, you can then lift the meter panel off and set it aside. Next, we need to remove the four 8mm bolts that hold the gauge cluster in place. With the bolts removed, you can then pull the gauge cluster down and to the back to release it. Now the flasher is mounted to the frame just in front of that gauge cluster. You might find it helpful to unplug the gauges and remove them so you can get to it easier, but simply remove that flasher, unplug it, and then plug the load equalizer into its place. And then make sure to test your turn signals before you put everything back together. The other option is to remove the front flasher from the front of the bike. Now to do this, we're going to start by removing the front garnish. Release the rubber gasket from around the mirror and push the mirror down and forward. You should now be able to locate a single 10 millimeter bolt on each side. It's a good idea to stuff a rag inside this area so that when you remove this bolt, it doesn't accidentally fall down into the shelter. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, go ahead and loosen this bolt enough so that you can then finish removing it using your fingers. There is a washer attached to it also. You just want to be careful not to drop these down into the shelter and that's kind of why we have that rag in place. Once the bolt's removed, you'll notice a rubber grommet. Go ahead and remove that and set it aside as well. Move both windscreen height levers in the up position. Release the rubber tabs on the mirror boots from the front garnish. Now on each side you can lift the garnish tab off of the post and that will release it uh, on each side. And then there's simply two grommets that hold the garnish in place on the very front toward the bottom. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the plastic guard. 
The windshield holder plate is held in place with two 10mm nuts and one 8mm bolt. Use a 10mm socket to remove the 10mm nuts on each side of the holder plate. Remove the single 8mm bolt from the front of the holder plate. Now you can gently remove the holder plate and set it off to the side. Now my Goldwing windshield is held in place with two screws on the outside, two on the inside, and yours may actually have two additional screws. Uh, these will all need to be removed before we can remove the windshield. Now while I'm taking these screws out, I may also mention you notice a bunch of wires hanging around on my bike. You may not have all that. Those are for some other accessories that I've been testing. So don't be concerned if you don't see these wires on your bike. Now as you remove the last screw, make sure be careful to hold on to the windshield. You don't want to just fall off and grab it and carefully set it aside so that it doesn't get scratched. Next, we need to release the meter panel. You don't need to remove it completely. Just pull up firmly at the back. There's two uh, pins and grommets that hold it in place. And then there's a series of little tabs around the edges that, that hold it in. Just kind of wiggle it and pull on it and be careful, and it will pull loose. You do not need to disconnect the tweeters or remove the panel. We just need it loosened for this process. There are eight 5 millimeter hex bolts that hold the meter panel visor in place, and we need to go ahead and loosen these. There are also four screws, two on each side, and two push pins in the front. So let's go ahead and use a 5 millimeter hex wrench to remove these eight bolts. Once these bolts have been removed and set aside, you can then use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the four Phillips screws. There are also two plastic push pins on the front that you simply pull up firmly and they'll come loose. And lastly, there's a single Phillips screw on each side of the meter panel visor that needs to be removed. With all the fasteners removed, you can now very gently lift up on this meter visor panel. You don't want to raise it up too far because you could break off some little tabs. So be careful, just be very gent gentle. And then I always shove some little microfiber cloths underneath just to kind of hold it in place. Now the next part is virtually impossible to videotape because it's in such tight quarters. But underneath this vertical frame member in the front of the bike, you're going to locate the stock OEM flasher. And we're going to remove that. And it's actually held in place. It's got a little piece of rubber slipped over a metal tab. And you can slide it off, unplug it. This is what it looks like. And you're going to basically replace it with the LED flasher unit. Before you put the bike back together, test your new LED flasher, turn on your turn signals, and see if they flash at the proper rate. That's how it should look. <laughs>